Are you an artist and you wonder what you can do to protect your work from being stolen? Or did it ever happen that somebody stole your art or parts of it and what do you do then? These and more are questions that we asked Cartoon Brew legal correspondent Brian Gabriel at the FMX 2018. Have a look. Law and art and cre creativity, like how does that go together? What, what do artists need to know about law? If you're an artist, you're, if you're a working artist, and hopefully and making money and, and making a living, you're going to be um, dealing in business situations. The law sort of oversees it all. And, and the artists, you know, if they're not careful, um, they can do some damage to themselves, cutting yourself short as far as, uh, of, you know, your business transactions. Okay. So what is it that I, as an artist, should know or should do to protect myself? The law that covers art is called copyright law, generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the thing to know about copyright law is that the artist has the rights to the work, generally. Yeah. Um, and to protect their rights to that work, uh, it's a good idea to potentially register. It's interesting. Uh, the, okay. the European wor world does not uh. have a lot of registration of copyright. In America, yeah. there's a, co a copyright registration system, and, and it's ideal to register your work with yeah. the copyright office. And that helps if, if there are mm. legal issues later, if you're trying, if someone steals your work, yes. and you're saying that person stole my work. Yeah. And you want to prove that you created your work first, that copyright registration is evidence that you created your work at this particular time. So it's like a record. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like a record. But importantly also, it's not Co your your work is protected by copyright mm -hmm. um, as soon as it's created as soon as it's okay as soon as it's put on paper or put on any what's called in, in American law it's called intangible form of expression so okay. whether it's on canvas or on paper or a sculpture it's something that you can look at and see and touch okay it's, that's the uh, that's when it's protected by copyright so it's, okay. registration is not necessary but it's helpful. And what about ideas? Are they ideas, protected? Ideas are not protected by, they're not protected by copyright law. Okay. So that's a key distinction. Um, there's what's called the idea expression okay. dichotomy in the legal <laughs> world. Uh, so the expression of an, of an idea is copyrightable. Okay. Um, because you, lots of people have similar ideas, but the way they would express that idea would be very different. Oh. So mm -hmm. uh, someone may do uh, star-crossed lovers like Romeo and Juliet. Shakespeare might do Romeo and Juliet, but Bob Wise might do West Side Story. So if I feel like I have this amazing idea that I, I don't want others to do it the way that I want to do it, the best I can do is to start making it. Correct. Okay. Would a script already be proof? Uh, a script is copyrightable, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's in uh, I, there's lots of lawsuits. To be <laughs> you know, there, this movie stole my idea, and right? I had wrote this script. I just mm -hmm. did a story for Cartoon Brew a couple of months ago about Zootopia, the, the Disney film. Uh -huh. And the uh, there's a screenwriter, Gary. I think his name's Gary Goldman. He's just an established screenwriter. He's written many things, um, makes lots of money in Hollywood. But he said he had proposed a project called Zootopia to to Disney many okay. years before, different idea. The expression was different, but the title was the same. And there were similar ideas, but again, um, yeah. he had, it, it, it was the expression that was protected by Zootopia. And, and how did, did that end? Did they actually go to court, court for that? Uh, he tried to sue, and the court would not take the case. Okay. The court, the, the court they already... dismissed it. And actually, it's interesting about that story. The, the yeah. <laughs> He, he did not sue on copyright grounds. He claimed, and this is um, an idea to keep in mind, he claimed that there was what's called a um, contract, a construct, I think it's called a constructive contract, where he had gone to Disney and met with people, yeah. pitched them his idea, and his claim is that they took these meetings with him with the understanding that if they used his work, there would be a contract formed. Mm -hmm. And he claimed that because... They used his work. 
Yeah. There was a contract form, so it became a contract issue. Yeah. There's different ways. It's not just copyright. There are different ways to um, protect your work. Trademark law is also considered uh, intellectual property, and trademark law is the, you know, the law that protects uh, logos and, and you know, names of companies. And the, the idea of trademark law is that um, in business, you want to know where a product comes from and mm -hmm. who made it, and so it's all about identifying the source of a product. Okay. Okay. So um, that can be very useful for independent artists as well, because if they're independent artists, they, they may not be working for a studio, and they may be um, you know, doing things on their own, and so a trademark, they, they may want to create their own trademark, and, and that is very helpful in the business as well. But in copyright law as well, uh, there was a case where it had to do with moral rights, and this is moral rights are rights that... Okay. Uh, Germany, especially Germany and France and the European nations, uh, protect. American law does not have quite the same protection mm -hmm. as uh, European law. But moral rights are um, typically that a artist has the right to what's called attribution. That, that, that uh, if, if someone displays an artwork, they are obligated to identify the artist. And right. also the idea is that um, there is something called uh, the right of... Um, the integrity of the work. So, uh, uh, like a TV show cannot chop up a work huh. without. Now, these rights can be waived if, if uh, uh, someone wants to pay a certain amount of money and they say, okay, <laughs> yeah, do what you want with it. Okay. But typically, um, they do have the right to their to the integrity of the work. In this case, it was actually a Monty Python case, uh -huh. and in the seventies, uh, when the American Broadcasting Company (ABC) um, Licensed the rights to, I believe it was to Monty Python's Flying Circus from the, the British company. Yeah. They, it was an hour and a half show, and ABC had said they'd do, they'd have to edit it for commercials uh, and things like that, but they ended up taking 24 minutes out of the program. Okay. Which is a significant <laughs> chunk of it, out. right? Yeah. So, so Monty Python, at least, I'm not sure if it was, all of the Monty Python reference Terry Gilliam because the case is called Gilliam versus ABC. So they, <laughs> they sued, um, Gilliam sued ABC and said, um, and, and made a trademark claim, yeah. went on a trademark claim and said that there's something called in trademark law, there's what's called passing off. And you say, uh, if, you, if, you, if you took something and said, this is my work, yeah. but it's someone else's work, or if you say this is someone else's work and it's your work, it's an infringement of trademark rights. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the source is not accurate, right? You're saying something came from me and it mm. came from him or it came from her and it came from you. So it's just, it, okay. does that make sense? So what happened here is that they, the ABC was found to be passing off what they created because they edited 24 minutes out of it. So it essentially became their work. And they <laughs> said it was Terry Gilliam and Monty Python's work. So hmm. they won on a trademark law case instead of a um, copyright case. So there's different ways to protect your work. I find the, the, the moral right, I find that very interesting. It's more like the, the good thing to do, the nice thing yeah. to do. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas in American law, it's all like, <laughs> who paid for it? But, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, that's very, I, I, I would assume that it's difficult to decide where the line is. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the international law, there's what's called the Berne Convention, and mm -hmm. that's the major copyright law governing most of the world. And, um, yeah. and you know, different countries. Not all countries are part of the Berne Convention, but and for a long time, um, the U.S. was not part of the Berne Convention. Mm -hmm. And then in, uh, in 1988, I believe, uh, finally the U.S. Uh, joined the Berne <laughs> Convention, but. To do so, they had to agree to um, adhere to the provisions of the Berne Convention, right? Uh -huh. And that the Berne Convention had moral rights as part of the oh. law. So, so <laughs> the U.S. is obligated to um, protect these rights, yeah. and they sort of did what I would call half-assed legislation <laughs> to sort of protect those rights. That, uh, but they limited it in, in significant ways, and and it's. With, probably not in real compliance with Fern as far as that <laughs> aspect of it goes. But okay. we, we restricted it. It's, we passed a law 
uh, the U.S. passed the law in you know, around 1990 or so. But mm -hmm. they limited to what's called fine art, so like paintings uh -huh. and sculptures and things like uh, that. Okay, have specifically. To have attribution. Yeah. That, um, so it's not completely in line with what they're hmm. supposed to be doing. I find it interesting, though, that there are international grounds, so that at least there's a little bit that I can do with somebody from another country. Sure. And, and yeah, and uh, any, anyone who is part of Bern, any other nationality, can register their works with the U.S. Copyright Office. You don't have to be an American oh, okay. to register your work with the Copyright Office. Does that cost money? Yes, it costs about, <laughs> I think it's around $50, 50 okay. American dollars. So it's, well, not, that's okay. it's not super expensive, but it, it's, yeah. uh, it's somewhat expensive. And so, um, but you, you just have to be a member of a, um, a treaty with the U.S. that, you know, copyright treaty. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not burned, there are other treaties. They, if you're a, if you're a member of a nation that has a treaty, a copyright treaty with the U.S., such as Bern, uh, you are um, the registration is available. Okay. The copyright um, what would I have to do? Like, if if I see that somebody stole my work, I, I see something that is almost taken, like literal words mm -hmm. or a character design. What would be my next steps? What should I do? Well, um, I would say there's a couple of different ways to go. Um, and, yeah. um, you can, you eventually you'll have to contact a person, right? <laughs> and yeah. you can either offer to license your work and say, you can right. use this, but pay me money. Yeah. Or you can, you know, you can, you know, take them to court, right? And sue mm -hmm. them and try to stop them from, from doing it and potentially get damages. And that's the other thing in American law, at least, uh, the copyright registration allows is that um, if you sue, you, you, won't, you can only sue if, if you have copyright registration in American, oh, okay. American courts. Um, but it allows, um, they allow uh, recovery of attorney's fees. If you win, uh -huh. the other side has to pay for your attorney and there's also what's called statutory damages. So there's a set, there's at least a set minimum of damages. Okay. So that's very helpful for uh, if you're trying to get a lawyer to take your case. Yeah, they, a lot of money. <laughs> right, and they want to know that there's a, a payment at the end of it. So that, that's what helps. Sure. Um, so that's one way to go is to sue. But, uh, you know, uh, everyone likes to negotiate. The licensing is uh, <laughs> yeah. the most friendly way to go about it, I suppose. Okay. Um, if I realize, okay, my, my work was stolen but by an American um, and I ha I didn't register it, can I still register? Yes, you can register it. Um, okay. It just doesn't provide quite the same level of uh, yeah. evidence of when it was created, but um, you, can, you can register your work. I heard in, in Germany, like some, some tip that I always heard from German producers was like, uh, 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 take your script, put it in an envelope, seal it, mm -hmm. mail it to yourself. Yes. Is that good evidence? Yes, I've heard that too. Yeah. It, it shows the date, and so yeah. it's evidence of when it was created. At least, yes. That's, yes. that's it. And the um, in America, at least the other, uh, the Writers Guild. If you have a script, mm -hmm. you can register your work with the Writers Guild. It's it's okay. less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like twenty or forty dollars, maybe. It, um, mm -hmm. So it, it's also good evidence of when something was created, um, but it doesn't provide quite the same level of protection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't copyright gives you a certain other um, yeah. statutory fees. But if you're looking for evidence, that's that's very okay. Ah, oh, that's good to know. Um, yeah, again to that situation, I re I realized my work was stolen. Um, the person doesn't want to talk to me. Um, like, is there something like a, a consultation that I can can make to get a picture okay. if I have a yeah. chance to win before yeah. I go to court? Uh, for that, you'd probably need to meet with a lawyer. Yeah. Um, there's, I know there are certain, uh, when I was in law school, there yeah. was a organization in, in California that sort of was available to artists to help them, fairly inexpensive, or it was, uh, it was um, to help them with their cases, mm -hmm. um, that was one way to go. But yes, if if someone stole and you do want to pursue legal um, recourse, <laughs> yeah, you will. You will. Uh, a lawyer would be able to look at a good lawyer, a good copyright lawyer would be able to look at your facts and determine whether you have a strong case. Yeah, and does that already cost money? 
No, typically, a, a, um, typically, at least in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. The practice is that uh, everywhere. A lawyer, yeah, I would assume Different. that a lawyer would not charge for first reading. Okay. Yeah, and the, um, you know, I've read a couple of stories about uh, artists who've had that happen, and what they, what tends to happen is that they find out there's an artist who worked for uh, Nicholas, I think it's Lucha Lucha. Uh, artist named Lily Chin, and uh, she created, and I'll talk about this at FMX, she created um, an illustration of these dogs you know, that she sort of put on the internet and, and found some popularity on the internet. Yeah. And then later, friends of hers told her that they saw those same dogs on clothing that was being made in <laughs> China. You know, so it's just <laughs> impossible to... Strange. Uh, so they could, yeah, yeah, impossible to protect, <laughs> you know, to find all the ways that people are stealing your work. Yeah. It happens all the time. China, I think that's one of our big disputes with China is that they do tend to have rather mm -hmm. loose standards of um, mm. use of others' work. I would say it's it's a major concern. Is how do you how do you guard against it? And um, another artist I know had he found out. Um, from a friend that another artist had used his work in a stage show. Um, okay. And uh, he contacted the other artist through Facebook and worked with, before before going to a lawyer, he tried to work out, he contacted the, his um, a, a electronic dance music artist, Bass Nectar. Okay. And he contacted Bass Nectar through Facebook and, and told me, you know, this is my work. Yeah. And uh, tried, to, tried to work out a settlement that way. Uh -huh. So it's another technique for an artist is to make themselves available either through social media or somewhere so that people will say, hey, I saw your work being used here. Or mm -hmm. just make yourself, because you, there's no way you can police all yeah. your your work, right? So you want to make yourself available so that people can approach you and say, sure, this, this yeah. is, you know, your friends or whoever. Uh, you know, I find myself wanting to hide away sometimes <laughs> and ignore the world, but uh, you want to make yourself open. And build. Yeah. Another thing that I was just thinking about, like of my own portfolio, I have like no link where it is like, if you want to use my work, if you want to license my work, like I don't have like even a text link right. about that. Right. But put your email address or something, right? Yeah. You, you, it's a good idea to just uh, let people know where to contact you because um, if someone finds sees your work and, and wants to use it, they, <laughs> they should, yeah. should be able to contact you. Yeah, sure, there's man. money involved. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, this is all the time we have tonight. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there, there was this extremely interesting, and I hope we could open some people's eyes. And yeah, that if you are an artist, you should you should think about that how you how you license and protect mm -hmm. your work. Right. Um, yeah. yeah you have to do business you yeah. have to make a living and yeah you want to be a working artist right? food rent <laughs> right exactly. have to be paid right okay thank you very much thank Frank you. Gabriel. Anytime. <laughs> hey there i just wanted to let you know that we have a 2d animation class on sale over at animatorisland.com we even have a free first lesson so if you want to get started learning 2d animation just click the button up here or the link in the video description and I'd be very happy to help you build very solid animation skills. Thank you very much for watching.